Today's video brought to you by Plate 9 Skidway Logs by Railroad near Austin, Potter County. What's up everybody? Alright, so for my short time in the woods, I've noticed that there's certain things you can do and can't do with certain species of hardwoods and softwoods that are found in my area when it comes to hand cutting. So in this video series, I'm going to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I was either taught, learned from trial by error, or watched on other videos and picked up on in my style of hand cutting. So hopefully you guys enjoy these videos and if you follow along throughout the whole series, maybe there's a little something you can use or maybe not. It's up to you guys. So I hope you all enjoy and stay tuned for many more videos to come. Thank you. Hi everybody. On today's tips and tricks, the good old northern red oak. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and lump black oak and there's some other shoemards, things like that. Oh, there's one of them flying squirrels. I uprooted some over there in a, in a, uh, you see them down there? No, probably not. I flushed them out. They were in an aspen tree that was hollow. Now they're just all over the damn place. But anyways, back to what we're doing. Red oak. Um, I'm just going to lump the blacks, the black oak, the shoemard, you know, scarlet. We'll just kind of put all that in, in amongst it because it all reacts pretty much the same. Um, the big, the big thing you got to watch with red oak is it likes to open up. So watch your hinge size. Don't get too fat on your hinges. Uh, if you want to try to swing a tree across its lean, so if you're going to try to go that, we're falling this way. So if you want to try to take it this way, this you know, swing it. Um, I recommend getting up out of that butt swell, getting them perpendicular fibers, because down in the butt swell, the fibers are real uh, confused and they get brittle. And it tends to break off premature. I almost smushed a real good saw doing that one time. Got a little cocky. But um, anyways, there's two reds there. That one on top, I mean it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Um sapwood is pretty brittle on this, it usually just breaks off. You don't necessarily have to clip it. You know. It's that's never a bad habit to be in but if you don't get it no harm done so let's let's cut one or two cut this one how's that sorry dang hopefully you guys got it well 
that's see I punched a hard on that one left myself two posts one thing is probably not a bad idea is to leave that trigger wood a little bit fat when you're leaving trigger wood if you're not chase cutting one you know or you got one that's not standing straight enough where you want to you know you want to leave a release leave those a little fat they tend to be a little brittle and especially in a root flare it'll pull that whole flare up out of the ground um, I have to find another one to cut because the dang camera fell but uh, all right hold on I'll be back in a minute all right here's another nice gun barrel right out Aha, they always say gun barrel cannon barrel nice and straight uh, hopefully the camera won't fall over the phone won't fall over on this one How's that? Not a bad tree. It's got some mineral in it. But see, I didn't even clip the sapwood. See, it just pretty much breaks off just like the rest of it. So, yep. That's about all there is to red oak. It's pretty self explanatory. So, hopefully, you guys uh, found something useful for that. I got a piece of aspen bark, I think, poked me in the eye. It's bugging me. And I have a chicken sandwich calling my name at the Oakdale Diner. So, hope you all enjoyed that uh, video. I'm going to go eat some grub and come back and continue deforestating.